What is up guys? Day two, mail time. I'm gonna open all this mail. We're gonna start from the smallest mail to the biggest mails. First off, it's this little envelope. Kind of feels like an iPod. And, oh, we got an iPod. Very nice. Dead iPod Touch 7. I do not know what this is. Oh, I do know what this is. Um, Restock alert, coming from the man himself, Tarkin, with the DIY mods. The audio capacitor bypass kits are back in stock. Let me do that. 25 now, beautiful. It's a restock alert. Beautiful. Next up, again, not too sure what this is. An iPod Touch here. Wow. Inbox, pretty standard 7th gen blue. Wow, that thing is mint. Look at that. Wow, look at it and then some nice accessories. I'm gonna plug in these two, um, and if there's more, um, I'll also plug them in. We'll take a look at them at the end of this mail time segment. All right, so this next one is coming from China. Always some good stuff in the Chinese packages. So we've got, oh, thank God. Thank God. Some Nano 2 batteries. Perfect. These were also terribly out of stock. So when I placed an order for these, they were supposed to be 400 milliamp hour, but they showed up as 580. We're gonna see if there's any clues to what's going on here underneath the label. Oh my God. I think it, there might be another layer underneath. I'm not sure what that is. We're gonna try another one. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. All right, there's always some potential for uh, sellers being a bit underhanded when they put these stickers on these batteries. Uh, there was one case very recently where I ordered some Touch 7 batteries. And I'm making a real mess. Now, let me preface this by saying, don't try this at home. It's very dangerous. I recently got a batch of some of these iPod Touch 7 batteries in, which were quite scandalous. So I'm gonna take off the outer casing of this on an original touch battery. This is all one wrap, right? This black containment. But on this one, under the light, you can see right there, it's just kind of a sticker on the top, right? So I'm gonna peel that off. Yep. So there's supposed to be 1,043 milliamp hour, but as you can see here, these aftermarket ones, once you peel up the sticker, only 1020. Not only that, but the edges here are padded with foam. So physically it's a one-to-one -one copy of the original battery, which is very sus. Now, I'm not gonna throw a fit over a difference of 23 milliamp hour, right? What difference does that really make? But, you know, come on, it's a bit scandalous, don't you think? Anyways, to be clear, these batteries aren't being installed in the iPods that I sell. They've actually all been returned for a refund. Um, and the seller was notified that uh, there's something fishy going on here. But, a bit of a tangent, let's get back to mail time. So we've got another one from China here. This one, I know what's inside. Um, at least I think so. Yep. Got more two terabyte backplates for the iPod Classic 567 and black and silver. Both thin, and that's gonna be a restock alert. Restock. This one actually no clue what's in here, so let's find out. Oh, it's a U2 iPod, that's pretty sick. That's right, uh, I want an auction for this one. Wow, this is uh, easily the nicest YouTube box that I have, for sure. Let's see what the iPod looks like. Our is a new squeeze USB cable. It looks like this might be our iPod right here. And it is, wow, okay. It's really not bad though. Not bad at all. It's pretty nice, I'd say. There's two iPods. Epic! No way, there's two iPods in here. That's pretty sick. What? I was gonna say, cause 
why was there an iPod in here? The iPod's supposed to go right there, but here's our second iPod. We'll give it a wipe down before I pass judgment on it. Oh, it's a photo too. They're both really in pretty nice shape, all things considered. I wonder if it's the original box here. Yep, that is original. Very cool. I'm gonna go put these two away where they belong. Oh, mama. This seems like a rather large box and it's very kind of light. Another iPod. Oh, wow, this thing is mint. It's in such nice condition. It's still actually shiny on the outside. Do you see that? I mean, look at that. That is gorgeous. The iPod, maybe not so much. Oh no, it's pretty pretty dang nice. Would you look at that? Oh, yeah, that cleaned up well. There you go. It did come with the full accessory kit. I don't wanna take this out of the package because I know I'll never be able to get it in quite as well as it is in now. And I don't think a USB cable came with this model originally. I believe it would have been a Firewire cable. This is clearly USB. But there is a rather uh, <laughs> janky looking Firewire cable here. That's so long. Because <laughs> the cap is... <laughs> oh, okay. It's been loved. Oh, it came with a case too. Wow. That's pretty cool. A thick one as well. Yeah, those are very hard to come by nowadays. You've got your dock plug cover to keep the dock from getting all dusty. Four pin, six pin firewire adapter. It looks like a carrying pouch. And then we've got some of the original headphones, the 2001 headphones. Pretty good value. Incredibly 2003. You got your Blink 182, 50 cent, Ava. Next up we got this thing. Jeez. And here's everything. We got some iPods here, miscellaneous replacement parts, of course. Some nice mini click wheels. Always good to have more of those. But we'll start over here with the Nanos. Got a four gig first gen nano. Merry Christmas, Sammy. First gen nano that not only looks like it has been abused, but um, there is some kind of serious chemical corrosion going on to genuinely eat through that aluminum faceplate that might have been chipped off. I don't know, you tell me. Tell me in the comments if it's been chipped off or if that was eaten away by some kind of solvent. So next up, I'll go through the third gen iPods here. This one came with a very nice case here, belt clip, um, and it looks pretty incredible. Big reward if found. How drunk would you have to be to call that number? <laughs> Parker's iPod. Really pretty incredible condition. We've got a 15 gig that has been loved, to put it kindly. And then we've got a, a 40 gig that is all right. It's okay. We can work with it. As far as fourth gens go, we've got four here. Looks like uh, monochrome. Pretty standard stuff, honestly. Monochrome as well. Uh, another monochrome, a bit light. Definitely missing some parts in there, but uh, certainly cosmetically pretty nice. We've got a second gen iPod in really pretty nice shape, 20 gig. Thickest iPod Apple ever made. We can put it up next to one of these iPod Touch 7. We've got this mini here that Cole was uh, drawn to. Um, he could not help himself and picking it up, which I can't blame them. And then finally, we've got two iPod classics. This one is really quite incredible, I'd say. I mean, look at that screen, that's beautiful, for real. And we've got another one. Looks like this is a 160 as well. Not in quite as nice of shape. I can't say that, no, I don't know not why. Not in quite as nice shape as the other one. Okay. Um, Cause you say in nice shape. Both of the face plates on these iPods are looking near mint. But in the silver one, you can tell that back plate has been used. Now, Cole, you were shocked at how nice this one is. Yeah, that one took me by surprise. I, I had a little accident, I won't lie. You wanna see uh, how long it's been powered on for? So we're gonna put it into diagnostic mode. We're gonna run smart data, and that's gonna tell us the power on hours logged. So it's got 427 power on hours. Um, seven, hard seven drive is going bad, unfortunately. Quick tip time. Cool, it's quick tip time. What's the difference between these two? Hey, no. One of them's a photo, one of them's a mono? Yes, okay. and which one's which? 
So my first instinct is to say the, the darker screen is the photo. That Correct. That trends a little darker. Correct. At a glance, you can tell the difference between the monochrome and the photo uh, by oh, how so dark the LCD is when it's off. Now, it's not something that you'll be able to pick up at first glance, but after having seen it in real life, it's something you can't really unsee. I can tell the difference at a glance. So here's how to tell the difference between a photo faceplate and a monochrome faceplate. Let's see, so. Here's your monochrome faceplate. There's no black foam border around the inside of the LCD. And with the photo, there is a black border. Hmm. Picked it. And then just sort of a, uh, a piece of trivia here. It's the iPod Photo 60 gig HP version. I wouldn't call it rare. It's certainly uncommon to see a 60 gig HP. I've only seen a handful, definitely less than a dozen at my time, refurbishing iPods. I actually have a boxed one that we'll go through in the collection video. That's gonna be pretty cool. Mail time is basically over, and these iPods have been in the charger for about half an hour now. Unfortunately, this one is straight up dead. It does nothing, and that's the condition I bought it in. And this one is at the hello screen, but the passcode locked. So, uh, it'll need to be restored, and that one will need to be repaired. We'll see. It's really not super interesting, but I know I said I'd get back to it. And here it is. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I guess the video is over. So be sure to smash like, subscribe. Big shout out to Cole for coming to Kansas for an entire week and filming me doing iPods. Big shout out to Logan. Leave a comment down below if you are a Logan head. I know I am.